Hello, and thank you for joining me for this presentation of 8th Grade Parent Night. My name is Peter Bednarik, and I'm the principal here at Scotia Glenville High School. For some of you, this may be your second, third, or even fourth time sitting through this type of presentation if you've had other children enter ninth grade here in Scotia Glenville. But for most of you, this is probably your first time, and I would be willing to bet that this presentation and the thought of your son or daughter entering ninth grade is a bit of a daunting prospect. You might be sitting there thinking, I can't believe it's already time to learn about the details of high school for my student. Believe me, I understand that feeling. It was just last year that my wife was sitting here as part of the audience, listening to the eighth grade presentation, um, uh, considering our son heading into high school for this year in ninth grade. I promise it will be okay. The details contained in this presentation may seem a little bit overwhelming and you will probably have some questions, but there will be time to get answers. And there are plenty of folks here at the high school and in the middle school that will help guide you along the way. People will be there to assist you and we'll continue to make uh, our phone numbers and our email addresses available to you. Even though this has been a very different kind of year because of the pandemic, and I'm very disappointed that today we can't be meeting each other in person for this, I hope that the slides and the information contained here will get you started in the right direction and lay a solid base for you planning with your eighth grader for entering high school and ninth grade next year. There will definitely be time to answer questions and make decisions with the counseling staff as your student progresses through high school. Today what I want to give you is really the 30,000 foot overview of everything that's involved in high school and the progression through high school. And I'll be focusing more on what just needs to be done to prepare for ninth grade in the weeks ahead. So don't get too hung up about 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. You're going to see a lot of information on these slides that describe the options that will be available to your son or daughter. But the most important thing is to get that overview and then begin thinking about the few decisions that need to be made for ninth grade. Near the end of the presentation, you're going to hear from Mr. O'Connell, who is your grade eight guidance counselor, as you know, on what that scheduling process will look like for next year. And that will unfold over the next few weeks. Whenever I have the opportunity to talk to a group of parents and students in our community, I always talk about at least two things. I talk about Tartan Pride, and I talk about the role that you as parents, family members, and community play in the lives of our students. I'm so proud of what our high school students are able to accomplish, especially this year. I'm especially proud of their work during these difficult times. And I commend you for committing this time here to learn and prepare for your child's coming high school years. The best thing you can do for your student is to be engaged and to be supportive of what they're going to be doing here at the high school in the coming years. I'm going to share a number of slides with you now about uh, the description of the important aspects of high school and kind of how all of it works with credit and regents exams and so on and so forth. This is certainly not an exhaustive presentation and you may be left with some questions. So feel free to stop the presentation, rewatch segments as necessary, and don't hesitate to reach out to me or any of the folks listed at the end of the presentation by their contact information should you have those questions. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to welcoming your child to Scotia Glenville High School for the 2021-2022 school year. As we begin, and by way of further introduction, I have the names of many of the administrators who work here at the high school and at district office, and who you may interact with over the next few years as your student moves into the high school. Tom Fivey is our assistant principal. Christine Nofrey is our dean of students. Nancy Lucier, the Fine Arts Director, Jamie Rockhill, the Athletic Director and Director of Physical Education, Megan Johnson, Current Academic Head for Science and Health, Susan Vacris, Academic Head for Humanities, English and Social Studies, Mark McCarthy, the Academic Head for Mathematics, and Ken Handen is our Current Director of Pupil Services in charge of Special Education and CSE, and Anthony Picconi is an Administrator for Special Education as well. You may remember him from the middle school in recent years as he was the Assistant Principal there. All of these folks and other department leaders will have their contact information at the end of our presentation. So preparing for the next step. Um, here's just a few quick and sort of uh, 
high-level uh, tips and things that uh, students and parents should be aware of. High school students, uh, much in the same way as middle school students, need to, but I think to a greater extent, need to focus on organization and self-advocacy, um, completing both short and long-term assignments that are going on at the same time uh, is the norm in the high school. Organizing time, um, especially as students progress through the high school and begin, begin to get more involved with uh, clubs and athletics and a uh, variety of um, many other things that happen in the life of a high schooler. So social life and some, some working jobs and um, that balance, that time work balance, uh, which is always important, uh, just becomes increasingly more important as students progress through high school. Um, we try to treat students as the young adults that they are, and we encourage them and try to teach them to utilize the various support networks that are available to them. So uh, teachers, parents, counselors, administrators, um, we make it a special uh, effort to introduce them to those people who can, who can provide them with assistance and to encourage them in different ways to advocate for themselves. So here are a few of the biggest surprises for ninth graders. Um, First of all, each course counts for one credit at the high school. Um, pretty easy to see the uh, symmetry there of one full year course equals one credit, a semester course or a half year course equals a half credit. But the key points here are that students need a minimum of five and a half credits in order to move uh, to 10th grade and so on and so forth up through the grade levels. So if a student's unable to earn those credits by the end of ninth grade, they won't uh, be in a 10th grade homeroom. And um, at the high school, this is the only means by which students progress through the classes. They must uh, obtain the credit. And I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about uh, the total number of credits required for high school. So uh, if students do fail courses at this level, um, if they are graduation requirements and in order to meet the minimum number of requirements for graduation, they must retake the class. Attendance has always been obviously an important part of a student's uh, learning all the way up through school, but in high school it uh, certainly is no different and that emphasis can, can uh, not be made enough. Um, missed work at the high school level can pile up very quickly. Um, you have already be become familiar, no doubt, with the differences between legal and illegal absences. Those determinations are determined uh, by New York State Education Department, not by Scotia Glenville. Um, but every absence will be coded, either legal or illegal. And I just um, thought it was important to include here the New York State de definition for um, a chronically absent student is someone who has missed 10% or more of the days that they've been enrolled in school. So if you just do kind of the simple math on this here, um, 180 school days in each school year. If a student misses 18 days, which really is only as many as four or five days a quarter, um, they would be designated as a chronically absent. And uh, as stated in one of the bullet points here, um, there really is no perfect substitute for not being in class. So um, we emphasize attendance and we appreciate, we appreciate the support of parents uh, in doing the same uh, for students. Obviously, this year with a pandemic, um, attendance has taken on a very different form. Um, but still, that exchange between teachers and students in the learning process is absolutely critical. This next slide is probably the most important slide in the presentation and maybe one that you want to pause uh, the recording on just to take a look at and sort of uh, work to understand. Um, it may appear complicated at first, but I think as we go through it, it'll be pretty clear. Um, in order to graduate from high school in New York State, students must achieve and earn a total of 22 credits. And so if you look at the bottom of both columns, you can see that the goal is 22 credits. Um, in addition to uh, the 22 credits, in order to earn a diploma from a New York State Public High School, you must also have passed um, a certain required number of Regents exams. And uh, every student that graduates from our, our school will graduate with a Regents diploma, and it will either be a 
Regents Diploma as detailed on the left-hand side of the slide, or a Regents with Advanced designation, um, which is designated or is uh, outlined on the right-hand side of the slide. So starting on the left-hand side, um, all students for graduation are required on their way to that 22 uh, credits. And I should say that the maj vast majority of our students obtain more than 22 credits for graduation, but <clears throat> excuse me, 22 is the minimum. On the left-hand side, for a, for a regular Regents Diploma, students must have four credits in English, four in Social Studies, that's one class each of the four years, three math classes, three science classes, one world language credit at least, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, one art or music uh, credit or credit alternative, and two physical education credits. We will also talk about that when we get to that slide, um, but those credits come in half credit increments. So a half credit of PE each year over the four years will result in the two credits needed, and a half credit in health. Those are the required uh, courses as specified by New York State. And then in addition, to reach um, the 22 and to achieve the minimum for a Regents Diploma, students must have at least a 65 or better on the following English, uh, I'm sorry, so the following exams, the algebra exam, the science, one science exam, the global history and geography, the U.S. history, and the English exam, which happens in 11th grade. So if all of those exams are completed at 65 or better, um, you can see there that they, they would have a total of, uh, in addition to the courses, they would have 18 and a half credits. And then there would be opportunity to achieve the, the, the uh, minimum 22 credits with three and a half elective credits. And we'll talk in the subsequent slides about some of the electives that are available to students. There are many. And as I said, um, 22 is, is really just a minimum, and the majority of our students go well beyond that. Now, those seeking a Regents exam with advanced designation on the right-hand side would do everything that is on the left-hand side uh, of, the, of the slide, but additionally take two more years in the same world language. They would take geometry and algebra 2, an additional science course, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, they would take the exams in geometry, algebra 2, they would take the class as well, take an additional science exam, and then uh, what we call the checkpoint B exam in world language. These exams, coupled with the additional credits, add up to 20 and a half credits, and then they would have an opportunity for at least 1.5 elective credits to reach the required number of 22 they may go well beyond that, again, as mentioned. And the last part of this slide just explains that the Regents Diploma uh, and the Regents, Advanced Regents Diploma um, are also able to, both of those uh, student uh, diplomas are able to achieve uh, with honors designation if the average score on their Regents exams is 90 or better. So now we're going to turn our attention to each of the departments specifically, and we're going to take kind of an overall look at the department and the progression of courses that are available throughout high school in each, but we're going to also put some emphasis on the first classes that freshmen will have available to them to take as they enter the school. So English is one of the simpler ones, as you'll see as we go along here. Um, English 9 is the course that students will select coming out of uh, the middle school, and some students may elect to enter the English 9 honors section. Um, this is a course that is uh, an additional challenge in the English and language arts, and it's a continuation of the honors program and progression that ha has started in middle school. But students do have an opportunity at, at different points throughout their high school career to enter the honors uh, program if they should so choose. Um, the selection is for the, for the program is based on GPA, a writing sample, and a teacher recommendation. If you have questions about this, you can certainly reach out to Ms. Sue Vakras, who is our academic head for humanities. Um, some students will have access to reading classes in the high school as well. So in the next slide, you get a good uh, picture of what the English pro 
program progression looks like from sixth grade all the way up to 12th grade. If you look across the top of the slide, you can just see the different uh, categories of each year. And then underneath each, you can see the options for students, which basically in the English department um, from sixth grade on up to the senior year um, results in a choice between either the regular English courses or the honors program. And you can see the arrows that point down into the honors program um, that that is signifying the opportunity for students to uh, self-select and move over into the honors program at any point in the future. So if this is not uh, something that your son or daughter has already um, taken advantage of and chooses to and would like to in the future, that remains available to them. Um, English 9, English 10, English 11, those three one-credit uh, full year long courses um, do not carry a regents until the junior year. The regents exam is taken at the end of uh, English 11. You can also see here that English 12 affords a variety of options to students. These are half credit or half year courses, uh, college composition, contemporary literature, media literacy, and lit and cinema. Those, uh, two of those half credit courses will comprise one full a senior year of credit for students at the end of their high school career in English. So turning to social studies, uh, this is also a fairly simple progression at the very beginning of high school. Each of our students uh, entering ninth grade will take global history, and this is a two-year course. It is taught uh, ninth grade and tenth grade. The Regents exam in global history occurs at the end of the tenth grade year. There is also uh, an honors class for this, and acceptance into the nine honors section for global history is based on, uh, as you can see, standardized test scores, GPA, and teacher recommendations. Um, this is a course that is just an uh, enhanced version of the course, the, the regular Global 9 course, and, and also Global 10. So students considering uh, this course should just be prepared for supplemental reading and additional independent research. And then the curriculum is based on the requirements for the AP World History course in the 10th grade. So you can also see this reflected on the social studies program reflection. It's set up similar to uh, the English one that we just looked at. And you'll notice that uh, students, again, have the opportunity to enter into the advanced courses anywhere along the way through the progression. And then if you look at the senior year, social studies uh, curriculum also is half year courses. There are half credit courses, participation in government, which is offered both in the fall and the spring, and the economics course. Now, PIG, as we like to call it, or participation in government, is a requirement, as is economics for all seniors. It's a New York State requirement, um, and students will have the opportunity to take uh, AP versions of those classes as well, should they so choose. AP Psychology is also an offering for our 11th and 12th graders in the electives in the social studies program. Moving on to the mathematics department, Eighth grade teachers will make recommendations for the mathematics placement for each student. Uh, the majority of students who do not take algebra in eighth grade, there are some, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but the majority will move on to algebra uh, in the ninth grade. And there are two options, really, for this algebra course. Algebra part one is a two-year sequence in algebra that will support students' math skills. Um, it's a two-year progression that will bring them to the Regents exam at the end of 10th grade for the Regents exam in algebra. Uh, most students will take algebra one in ninth grade, and students who complete that course will typically take the regents at the end of their freshman year in algebra and then move on to geometry in their sophomore year. For those students who were on the accelerated path, and we'll move to the next slide and take a look at, at this uh, math program progression, but for those students who were on the second pathway down below on the slide, which says accelerated and took math honors in grade six and in the grade seven, they have already taken algebra in grade eight and therefore will move on most likely to geometry in grade nine and then eventually algebra two, grade 10, and then pre-calculus with some additional options for uh, AP calculus, both the AB course or the BC course, and then uh, statistics as an option as well. Uh, the normal progression, which you see above, um, from math six to seven to math eight, 
as I said previously, results in ninth graders taking either Algebra Part 1, which again is the course that is a two-part course, Part 1 in ninth grade, and then Algebra in 10th grade with the Regents at the end of that, or moving directly into Algebra and then in ninth grade and then in 10th grade Geometry and then Algebra 2. Um, there are some additional pathways there, as you can see with the arrows, um, that can all be discussed with uh, counselors and the academic head as needed. And then there are a variety of options um, for elective programs in uh, the 11th and 12th grade year. And now moving on to science, the majority of ninth grade students will take Regents Living Environment in their, in their ninth grade year. Those students who were accelerated in eighth grade and have already taken Earth Science at the middle school will move on to Regents Chemistry or Regents Living Environment in ninth grade. Um, important uh, note here on the slide, as you can see, is the challenge of completing labs and maintaining lab reports and notebooks. Um, it's a New York State requirement that labs uh, and, and the, the appropriate number of lab minutes and uh, lab reports must be completed and passed in order for students to be eligible to take the Regents exam at the end of the course. And as you can see, the slide also refers to a stretched living environment course. Uh, for those who need it, it can be taken over, over two years. So as you look at the science progression slide, you can see that the majority of students will move from science eight into regents biology or living environment in grade nine, and then earth science in grade 10, chemistry in grade 11, and perhaps physics in grade 12 with some additional uh, third-year science electives. If you recall, there's an opportunity for students to be able to add additional science credits um, from, our, from our initial slide about the number of credits required. You can see in the box those opportunities that we have currently available in the high school um, for what we call third-year science uh, electives. So introduction to medicine, science and engineering, sports, physiology, robotics, and food science. If you take the accelerated pathway down below, students that may be already on that pathway with having completed Honors 6, uh, Science, Accelerated 7, uh, Regents Earth Science would have been created, uh, completed in 8th grade and then moving to Regents Chemistry in ninth grade. Then it would be AP uh, Bio would be the option, AP Biology in 10th uh, grade, and the opportunity for Supa Physics at Syracuse University, Project Advance and then an opportunity for students to take advanced placement chemistry in their senior year. Now moving on to the health department, uh, we, as I mentioned earlier, there is a half credit of health required for every student graduating from high school. New York State mandates that. And at Scotia Glenville High School, students will typically take their health class in the 10th grade. And you can see there on the slide that the topics of study are, are wide ranging from wellness and um, disease prevention, human sexuality, environmental health. Our health department is overseen by Megan Johnson, who is our, also our academic head for science. In the World Languages Department, in order to earn, earn a Regents Diploma, if you remember back to that earlier slide, um, the minimum is that students earn one high school credit, and the majority of our students will have completed that credit by passing the Checkpoint A proficiency exam at the end of uh, whichever language they've chosen in eighth grade. And then for those students who are working towards an advanced designation on their Regents Diploma, they'll take... Uh, the courses leading up to three additional courses in world language leading up to what we call checkpoint B. And so that's why you see designated here level B1, B2, and B3. That would be Spanish 1, Spanish 2, Spanish 3, or French or German. And the students must pass all three courses uh, leading up to the checkpoint as well as the checkpoint exam, which in the past had been, had been a Regents exam, but uh, is no longer offered by the state. So a number of students may accept in world language and skip that level one in their first year of high school, go directly to uh, level two, and then take the checkpoint B exam as uh, at the end of their 10th grade year after achieving those credits. Turning our attention now to physical education, as I mentioned earlier, each of the physical education classes are half credit courses and they're offered every year. It's a requirement that students must take physical education each year and throughout the year. So uh, a half credit means that the course is delivered in an every other day rotation. Uh, this is usually balanced against uh, the student's 
uh, science lab uh, period or study halls. And physical education uh, throughout the course of, of high school emphasizes uh, wellness and nutrition and physical af- activity. And as you can see from the slide, um, a strong emphasis in, in lifetime sports and lifetime activities that uh, students will be able to benefit from. Um, they're introduced to the fitness center, the equipment, and the way to properly use that equipment, as well as to the concept of making personal fitness plans and and building uh, healthy lifestyles for the future. If you recall from the beginning, the total number of physical education credits required for graduation is two, and that comes from four years of a half credit each. Next, I'm going to describe the fine arts department and what has to be accomplished there. Um, Students have to complete at least one credit in fine arts, and there's a variety of ways that they could go about this. Um, Art and music, obviously, are the first that come to mind. Students can take fine arts courses all the way throughout high school. Um, There are many uh, that will allow them to gain additional electives. They could also take a five-credit sequence on their way um, to an advanced regents diploma, and I'll refer to that in the next couple of slides slides as well. Um, But the most common class for students who have not taken it already in eighth grade is studio art in in the art department. There are also music courses, as you can see, uh, the concert choir, concert band, and orchestra for those that are already working through um, those progressions and and have already begun with an instrument. And then the knowledge course, uh, Music in Our Lives, is also available. These are full-year, one-credit courses. Many students will continue to take the fine arts courses in addition uh, to their regular required or mandated courses, and that will provide some of the additional credits needed um, to get beyond the number of 22. In the business department, as you can see from the slide, there's a wide variety of electives that are available for grades 10 through 12. Um, Ninth graders will be choosing from courses such as career and financial management, which is a full credit course, or computer software applications. And students can also work and earn, you'll see this theme in a couple of our uh, additional departments here, they can work and earn a five credit sequence to go towards the advanced regents diploma by taking um, five full credits in the business department. Uh, We'll just call your attention again to the SUPA accounting course that stands for Syracuse University Project Advance. That's a college level in the high school course. Um, And uh, it is, as as the name suggests, direct from Syracuse University with one of our teachers acting as the teacher. And also in the Family and Consumer Sciences Department, or FACS as we uh, abbreviate it, in the FACS Department, students have that opportunity to earn a five-credit sequence towards the Advanced Regents Diploma, if these are the kinds of classes that um, especially interest them. Uh, Ninth grade students can choose from courses like Food Prep, Child Development and Psychology, Fashion Housing and Design, Uh, And the additional electives for grades 10 through 12 are listed there below. Food science, advanced foods, social psychology, adolescent psychology, and child growth and development, which is also a college course uh, bearing college credit. I would note that the fashion housing and design course can be used to fulfill the fine arts requirement. If you remember from that original slide where we talked about some of the minimum requirements for graduation. So fashion housing and design can serve as that fine arts credit. In our technology department, ninth graders have uh, at least three different choices in their first year for ITT, uh, design and drawing for production, uh, materials processing, which is largely woodworking, and trans systems, which is small engines. And then you can see the additional electives that we currently have available in the high school for grades 10 through 12 listed down below. Um, I should also note here that, uh, as you see at the bottom, design and drawing for production can be used to also fulfill that fine arts requirement, that is um, a technical drawing class. So I've kind of taken you through each of the different departments in our high school, the academic departments in our high school, and as I, as I know that we went uh, fairly quickly, you may have additional questions about what's available in the future and um, what choices students have as ninth graders. I will have the list at the very end of the presentation of all the department leaders and their contact information so that you could direct any more specific questions to them. Finally, I'd like to emphasize some of the additional special um, departments and areas of our high school that we haven't already covered that weren't in the academic departments, starting with the library 
Media Center. The Library Media Center at our school is really one of the hubs of uh, all of school life. Uh, certainly during this year, it's been a little bit different than in previous years, but it still serves as an important joining place for our students as they learn and weave their knowledge together from a variety of classes. So at the Library Media Center, students are able to obviously access books, but probably more importantly, um, additional media tools and online resources. Um, it's a place where students are, yes, able to socialize at times, but um, they're really able to get additional support for the learning that they're doing. And oftentimes our students' uh, academic classes will meet in the library and be supported by Liz Fawcett, who is our library media specialist. I'd like to talk about our GIVE program, which is one of the hallmarks of Scotia Glenville High School. I take every opportunity that I have to, to talk about our community service learning program. GIVE's a student-run service learning program, and I truly mean that. Um, it's facilitated by an adult at the high school, but each of these programs that you see listed on the screen here, and this is just a sampling of programs that we have had over the years, um, they are run by students in our uh, upperclassmen at our high school. And students, even as early as the beginning of ninth grade, are able to get involved in this volunteer service learning. Um, students can join Give at the website below, sghsgive.com. Um, but as I said, e each of these different programs, and I, I usually, if we were meeting in person, I would, I would take some time to sort of go through um, what each of these programs looks like and what they do. But I'm sure if you've been in our community for any length of time, you've probably seen or heard of some of these groups. And, and the work that they've done. They're student-initiated, student-led, and they provide an outstanding service learning experience for our students throughout high school. I really encourage all of our freshmen and all of our high school students to get involved in one of these programs at least. There's also, of course, many clubs and activities that are available. Um, you see on the next slide uh, clubs like uh, the yearbook and DECA and FCCLA, which uh, are, are somewhat tied to uh, the department areas, but then uh, clubs like National Honor Society, uh, which has a national charter, and the ski club, the student senate, the school store. There are lots of ways to be involved in the high school, and I think it's one of the most important aspects uh, of being a high school student. I, I spoke at the beginning about balancing um, kind of the work-study balance and the social life and all of the other activities, um, they're all important. These are all an important part of making well-rounded citizens and that's, that's an important emphasis for us. Um, and so I, I continue to encourage students to get involved, get involved in as much as they can and do it right from the beginning, but uh, it's never too late. So I'd encourage you to talk with your son or daughter about the different things that interest them and the opportunities that'll be available to them here at the high school. And from as early as freshman orientation and at the, uh, at the beginning, or the end of the summer, I should say, in the beginning of the school year, we'll begin talking to them about these things. The next slide um, demonstrates some of the additional ways to get involved beyond just academics. Obviously, students may be taking music uh, for their requirements, but then there are additional arts and athletics opportunities. You can see jazz band, drum line, drama club, uh, the art club. The Tri-M Honor Society is a national honor society for students involved in the arts. And uh, as you no doubt know, uh, as Tartans, we have 28 varsity sport programs. Um, Mr. Rockhill, our director of athletics, and our, our PE director um, oversees all of that and varsity club participating as an opportunity to participate there. The next and, and final step as we wind down the presentation is uh, for you to hear from your uh, guidance counselor at grade eight. So Mr. O'Connell has a brief message about what scheduling will look like in the coming days and weeks for your eighth graders as you begin to really ramp up and make firm plans for ninth grade. Hello, eighth grade parents and guardians. I hope you and your families have been staying well during this difficult time. As the school year has progressed, I've heard from many of you regarding the difficult times that you and your children have faced as a result of the pandemic. And I want to remind you that I'm here to provide any support that I can to you and your eighth grader. In the coming weeks, we will be beginning the process of planning your child's transition to the high school. The first step in this process is the virtual grade eight parent night that you are viewing now. 
The next step in the process at the middle school will be for me to conduct classroom scheduling presentations for the 8th graders. I will be attending ELA classes virtually during the week of February 8th. During those classroom sessions, I will provide a brief overview of high school graduation requirements, and then we'll review ninth grade course requirements and elective options with the students. Students will already have been pre-registered for required courses, and they will enter preliminary elective course requests during the class sessions. That will be based on my explanation of the class options. You then will be able to review your child's course requests through the parent portal on PowerSchool. At any time, if you have questions about any aspect of the ninth grade scheduling process, you are welcome to email me or call me. I would also be happy to arrange a virtual meeting to answer any questions that you may have. Students will also be encouraged to email me or meet with me if they have any questions about ninth grade classes. Students who receive additional academic support through 504 plans or an IEP will be learning more about recommendations for academic support at the high school at 504 and CSE annual review meetings that will be taking place in the coming months. Thank you for taking the time to view this message and please reach out to me with any questions or concerns you may have. Stay well. So I'd like to say a special thank you to Mr. O'Connell for being willing to participate in the presentation and for all the work and communication that he's had with all of you throughout the course of this year and will have over the coming weeks as your students look to get scheduled for ninth grade courses. Um, if you have any questions about that process, he can certainly help you with that and uh, we'll try to make the transition as smooth as possible. I appreciate, once again, you taking the time uh, to listen to the presentation and to begin thinking about what high school looks like for your son or daughter. I'm sure that there are uh, some degree of questions, some amount of questions that you may have, and I want you to be able to have the opportunity to ask those either via email or through phone conversation or um, whatever works best. We can set up meetings if need be. Once again, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and for beginning to think about what will come next for your student as he or she enters high school. As difficult as this year has been for everyone, we are hopeful that next year will bring some return to normalcy and we really look forward to partnering with you and your family to have a successful start to your student's high school career. We will still plan to have an in-person ninth grade orientation on the last Thursday of August, which is our custom. On that Thursday, you'll be able to bring your incoming ninth grader here to school and they'll get a chance to tour the facility and get familiar with where things are. I want to leave you with a few slides here, which will contain the contact information for each of the department leaders for the departments that we've just talked about. And you may reach out to them via email or by phone. Their contact information will be up on the slide. And you can always reach out to me with any general questions that you may have. Thank you and be well.